If you love college football and like to debate and discuss it, please follow me on Twitter at Mark Rogers TV, and we will talk college football. This is not just about me giving my opinion and analysis and my predictions. We want to hear from you. You know your team better than I do. I'm sure you've got conference bragging rights, maybe uh, some issues you'd like to talk about, historical football games, whatever it is, we will talk college football. So please join us um, on Twitter as well and subscribe to our YouTube channel here and we'll talk it up. All right, we're through most of the garbage games, the huge point spreads. We're getting down to some really good conference action this week, in particular in the SEC, looking at this game LSU at Georgia, number six versus number nine. We expect this to be a much better football game than Texas A&M and Bama, despite all the hype in College Station a few weeks ago. This game will actually feature two fullbacks. If you've only been watching college football for a few years, this could be a foreign term to you, fullback. These offenses run pro-style offenses. They'll actually have two backs in the backfield at one time, and one will be a really big guy that runs as a fullback. Two of only three uh, depth charts in the SEC, along with Brett Bielema at Arkansas, which is not surprising coming from Wisconsin, that list full-time fullbacks, not H-backs, fullbacks. And they are two guys that will probably play in the NFL. Uh, they're that good in uh, Quavon Hicks of Georgia and J.C. Copeland of LSU. Okay, let's start the analysis with Aaron Murray at Georgia. Uh, much maligned despite all the passing records, will probably leave Georgia as the all-time SEC passing leader in most major categories, but 2-9 and nine against the top 10, much maligned for that. Let's keep in mind that he's performed much better against the better teams recently, against Bama in the SEC championship game last year. 365 yards passing against the Tide, and of course, the infamous four yards away from the BCS national championship game, or they would have scored like 35 points against the Tide. Okay, in the opener this year against Clemson, he hung 35 on the Tigers, 339 through the air, no picks. Took the loss, though. Finally got the win against South Carolina, 41 points against a very good Gamecock defense um, last season, or uh, just a couple weeks ago against the Gamecocks and winning that game, and the long, long touchdown pass, pass to Scott Wesley in the fourth quarter to ice that game. Okay, Murray's improvement hasn't just been him. It's been the gelling and maturity of the offensive line. It's gone hand in hand because it kind of came to a head this time last year in Columbia, South Carolina, when the Bulldogs were ambushed by Clowney and Sutton and Charles and those guys along the defensive front of South Carolina, 35 to seven. Murray looked horrible, 11 of 31 passing, 109 yards. Okay, since then, this offensive line has gelled. They've played together. They only had roughly four or five starts each guy at that point. So we're looking at close to 20 starts a player. So we're talking about David Andrews and Chris Burnett, Denarius, uh, Canarius Gates and Dallas Lee, uh, Colton Houston to a lesser degree. The other four guys are much more experienced. Colton Houston, the fifth starter, and also John Theus, who was a freshman All-America last year. They actually have three offensive linemen off the bench. They're very comfortable playing. So eight deep at Georgia. That's going to be a huge key in this game, keeping Murray Upright, protected in the pocket, giving him lanes to throw against a very good LSU front four and front seven. Okay, possibly the best football player on the field will be Todd Gurley. Jeremy Hill fans, cut me a break here. Gurley leading the SEC and rushing at 126 yards per game. Uh, best mark in the SEC, backed up by Keith Marshall, who would start for about 90% of the teams in college football. Although, Marshall, after a great freshman season, averaging just 3.8 yards per carry. Quavon Hicks, he's the fullback we were talking about earlier. He's a monster, great fullback, great blocking fullback that opens up the lanes for these guys. Okay, Chris Conley at wide receiver. We mentioned uh, Scott Wesley, Michael Bennett. Bennett's probably got the best hands. Of course, they lost one of their top threats in the Clemson game. Tight end Arthur Lynch, he's only caught eight passes, but two for touchdowns. He could be a threat and a guy that, that Murray needs in the passing game. Uh, Ten receptions out of uh, Scott Wesley, out of Conley, and Bennett. Uh, Murray spreads it all over the place as opposed to Zach Mettenberger, and we'll talk about that in just a second. We like the matchup with the LSU secondary because we like Georgia's wide receivers. It's a good group. It's a solid group. It's a pretty deep group. But at the same time, nobody's really that special in this group. And... 
Jalen Mills, Jalen Collins at the corners. Also, Craig Lostin at safety. LSU's got a very, very good uh, secondary, one of the best in college football. We think they will put the clamps on the Georgia passing game unless Murray gets all sorts of time. And it's up to guys like Jordan Allen with two and a half sacks at defensive end. And, of course, uh, Freak Johnson, Anthony Johnson, who's got two and a half tackles for loss. Ego Ferguson, the humble Ego Ferguson, uh, 21 tackles from a defensive tackle position. Very impressive. And the linebackers with uh, one of my favorites, Kevin Minter, moving on to the NFL. Layman Barrow, who leads the team with 22 stops. And also uh, Quan Alexander, very talented. DJ Welter. Uh, he's actually less talented, less athletic than the other guys, but he's the middle linebacker. He gets everybody in place. He's had some criticism here, so let's watch him try to fill the gap and tackle Gurley and Marshall. It'll be interesting because he's not known for elite athleticism, the type you see from starters in the SEC. And Auburn hit up this defense, Trey Mason, for 132 rushing yards last week. So we think of LSU being stout. Uh, against the the rushing attack, but they wore down in the second half last week. Maybe it was the big lead. Uh, maybe they just wore down. So the backups are going to have to play well as well for LSU against this Georgia offense. LSU, we did not post as we did Georgia to be one of the best offenses in college football during the preseason, but they have played well. Look at the TCU game in particular, and they hung up 35 quick points on Auburn last week, got helped by a botched punt, but still put up big rushing yardage, especially in the first half with, of course, Jeremy Hill back in the lineup after missing the first game against TCU, and he has taken over ever since he got his hands on the football about halfway through last year and just rung up 100-yard 100 100 yard games against some of the best teams, Texas A&M and Bama and uh, Florida in the SEC. All right, uh, Jarvis Landry and Odell Beckham Jr. We talked about the uh, passing game for LSU, much different in the sense of productivity and the focus of the targets than Georgia. Murray spreads it around. Nobody has more than 10 receptions. But you got Jarvis Landry with 24 catches, six touchdowns, and you got Odell Beckham Jr. averaging almost 20 yards per catch on 20 receptions and four touchdowns. So those two guys have 44 receptions. Nobody else on the LSU roster has more than three catches. So I think uh, the Bulldogs are possibly game planning for Jarvis Landry and Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, obviously, Jeremy Hill's got uh, help at running back, support of him. Guys like uh, Alfred Blue, who was the starter coming into last season, lost his job to Hill due to injury, and then Hill just took it over. And, of course, Kenny Hilliard and uh, Terrence McGee as well. J.C. Copeland, the big fullback, and I love what linebacker Ramik uh, Wilson had to say, the leading tackler for Georgia. Basically, this is just a really big dude. That's J.C. Copeland. So we're going to see smash mouth football with linebackers, especially middle linebackers, hitting the fullback in this game on these lead block plays. Okay, the LSU offensive line is very stout, very good. We trust the line against the Georgia defense, and I believe this to be the main focus and turning point and key in this football game is the Georgia defense. They played much better against North Texas, despite the score, it being a little bit close. There were plays on special teams made against them. That could be a concern uh, with Georgia playing LSU in the return game with uh, Odell Beckham Jr., one of the most explosive guys in the country. But Amarlo Higuera, or Herrera is a fine talent. He is second on the team with 30 stops. The secondary is very young. We trust Damian Swan to make good plays and do the right things in the secondary. But George is very young in the secondary. We expect Zach Mettenberger. A lot of pressure on him coming back to Georgia. If you don't know the story, look it up. Uh, his mom actually works in the Georgia uh, athletic department office and was given the week off by Mark Rick just to get away from all the hype and possible hatred <laughs> swirling around the Georgia campus uh, for Zach Mettenberger, who um, was ousted off the football team but has come back as the LSU quarterback and performing much better this season than last season. And he certainly turned the corner against Bama and uh, the Ole Miss game and into the bowl game against Clemson last year. Georgia, LSU, we expect it to be a very entertaining game. Georgia's got the better offense, LSU the better defense, but decidedly the better defense for LSU. And that's why we like LSU. And there's a few leaks possibly in the Georgia special teams. Both have capable kickers. 
LSU 27, Georgia 24. That's our pick. Now we'd love to hear from you right here on Mark Rogers TV and ProFootballCentral.com.